Good morning guys and welcome back to Holland's Allotment. It's the 15th of May, Saturday 2021. In the shed as usual, just having a cup of coffee. Uh, and I'm afraid I'm starting today's uh, video on a sad note. Earlier in the week, um, I got a message from one of my subscribers' son to say that his father had passed away, unfortunately. Um, and he was expecting two youngsters out of this loft. Um, and he was so excited about it. But unfortunately, he's passed away before he received those. And so my thoughts and condolences go out to his family. Right, guys. Um, as you've seen from the very first clip, with all this rain, then sunshine and rain, and sunshine and rain and sunshine, the grass is up around my ears again, just about. So, I think the first job I've got to try and do today, uh, and try and beat the rain, is to pull the lawnmower out and get the grass cut again. Now, I bought myself a new lawnmower, um, one of these self-propelled ones because it's getting really difficult for me to push the hand mower around now. I know I've got the ride on mower, but because we've laid those flags and they haven't sunk down and settled yet, um, I'm frightened of damaging the, that lawn mower. Uh, for now anyways, until those flags sink down a little bit. So I'm doing it with the hand mower again, guys. Now, I bought myself a new one because it's getting hard to really push that little hand mower around the uh, allotment. So I've got a self-propelled one. However, that isn't assembled uh, yet, so I'm thinking I'm just going to pull the other hand mower out again today just to try and beat the rain and get that sorted. Don't know what else I'm going to get done today, but whatever we do get done, we'll bring you along as usual. Right, guys, two seconds later for you guys, an hour and a half later for me. And now we've got the grass cut again. Yeah, we've still got the nettles under the avis and things like that, and I haven't been round with the strimmer. I really haven't got the time or energy, and I really not bothered. The majority of the grass is cut, and we've got cut up and right round the back of this shed as well. It just keeps on top of it for now, guys. Uh, as I said, we haven't gone up the edges, but it's not that bad. It still looks a million dollars to what it was, and that's the main thing. Give you a quick look in the polytunnel. Um... You can see everything's absolutely flying along now, guys. These lattices, the Lola Rosa, uh, are all ready. I can start picking leaves off these, or even take them whole if I wish. I'll probably start taking the leaves off them. The carrots are coming along tickety-boo, as you can see. Look at the size of those now. The tomatoes are drying back slightly, and they're starting to pick up. Uh, they've been really, really slow tomatoes. This year. Well, everything has, because we've had such a weird and wonderful month, a uh, couple of months, red hot, but freezing at night and all the rest of it, so we, uh, so we planted some of this uh, spinach in the beds, and as you can see, it's positively thriving, however, I'm getting some damage on here, but I can't see any insects, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some in there, I've seen a couple of spiders running across the surface, big spiders oh, I don't think it's spider mite I can't see anything um, if anybody knows what might be causing the damage if you could let me know in the comments below that would be really appreciated guys give you a little bit of a closer inspection it looks like it's a bit of webbing underneath if you can see that on the video I'm not sure um, Yeah, it's like it's like webbed, and then it bursts into a hole. But then it's like different types of insects, because that one's chewed the edge off. Any ideas in the comments, guys? Been much appreciated. I've got a couple of these all year round. Uh, uh, winter, uh, yeah, all year round, I think they're called. And, uh, yeah, all year round. And these are starting to heart up now. 
these two spinach down here where we uh, ended up pulling a, a, a full lettuce and we had the space where we had a rogue lettuce we've put two spinach in there as well and the, you can see how they've came on as well and you can see the difference between those and these these are the one, same, same ones but in the uh, trays and ironically the ones that stayed in the trays <laughs> and these have got all the nutrients in the ground these are they're probably going leggy that isn't that they're growing better they grow, they're going leggy they need planted out as well now guys and you can see the yellowing in on the leaves they've used up all the nutrients in those little pots the peas are looking beautiful I need to get these in the ground in one of those beds over there hopefully this weekend we've still got um, two of the little French dwarf French beans and we planted some cabbage in here <laughs> and I don't know what happened here guys but as you can see we've got some French beans or something coming up here whether I've got these two cells mixed up I don't know down here we've still cucumbers and lettuces and peppers that we planted still nothing came out on them a really bad germination this uh, year but I've heard a lot of people saying they're having similar problems it's probably bad batches of seed I don't know um, but perhaps this weekend as well we'll get this bed cleaned down and we're going to get these tomatoes in as well guys um, and dot a few other plants in, in between like we did last year we've been uh, harvesting these onions and we've taken quite a lot of these onions and eaten them they're absolutely beautiful we've stripped that full patch out and then we've been picking them as we get the odd one starting to put a bolt on um, that's actually garlic those ones there the garlic's not ready yet but I probably will pull these few here just because they're in my way and I want to claim this bed back up till about here at least and probably put the peppers in, the, in, in this bed here still got uh, some beetroot to plant out uh, in one of the beds the others that we split and put into the other bed are coming along really nice we've got the peppers we want to get planted out I transplanted those uh, honeydew melons at the back there and when we watered them in you can see they didn't like that much that amount of water they started to yellow and curl back on the end of the leaves but hopefully hopefully it will make it sorry about the camera work guys another one there coming up that one there I think we've killed that one and drowned it, but that one should survive. And then we've got three more um, melons in the back there. I think these are Hale's best. Yeah. So we've got three out of our five come up out of the Hale's best. We've potted on the uh, aubergines that I grew myself. We planted six and we've got four up. And these have, up, since we've re-transplanted these midweek, they've absolutely flew up. Um, and I'm not sure whether I'm going to put these in uh, the 10-litre uh, buckets and stand them on a bed in here somewhere or over in the other polytunnel and grow them in buckets, them guys. The onions, we've still got plenty of onions. We can decide what we're doing with and dot them here, there, and everywhere between beds. So overall, in the season... It hasn't been too bad considering the weather we've been getting uh, really really up and down um, really long dry periods then frosty nights and then this month May which is usually beautiful has been nothing but non-stop rain and then showers and drying up a little bit which is good for the plants but when I put my onions in last week over in the growing area what happened was it rained non-stop for three days and I didn't think they were going to make it because onions really don't like a lot of water. As you can see how dry these beds are but look at how well these onions are thriving. You get a drink as the bulb bin up and as you can see these are quite nice these, these are not bad considering these were just an experimental crop. We're getting these now before the main onions uh, this season so yeah, it's just a nice trail of uh, onions now. We're getting the onions and the lettuce. We're going to plant some more uh, lettuce seed as well. 
We've got all these, we've got all those over in the growing area as well to pick from. But we'll put another batch in so that if these become tough or get go to seed, we've got something to follow on with, guys. Go on for a cup of coffee and I'll catch you in the shed. Right, guys, as usual, I'm having a cup of coffee and rehydrating myself. Um, we actually, whilst we were cutting the grass, it actually started pouring down. But I needed to get it done. Um, it kept shower, heavy shower and then it would ease off again and then it would heavy shower and ease off. But I just plodded on and got it cut because I thought if I don't and then it stays on for the day, I won't get it finished and it'll be twice as high next weekend. So I just plodded on and got that done and I'm pleased I did. Uh, yeah, we've had some really, really strange weather. And we've had some strange germination, or non-germination, I should say, this week, this year. And I thought it was just me. But it, I have seen a couple of other YouTubers uh, saying that certain seeds had, hadn't grew. Uh, some, some coming up sporadic, and some weren't coming up at all. And I thought it was just me, but um, and I thought, is it the compost, is it the seed, is it me? Am I overwatering, underwatering? But I'm not doing anything different than I normally do any other year, guys. And... Uh, I haven't had the success. Uh, we know you never get 100% germination as a rule. Uh, the turnips that I grew were an exception. And the lettuce as well uh, was almost 100%. Uh, and everything else has just been really sporadic. The onions done okay as well, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. We'll go with what we've got, and that's it. Um, to be honest with you, the time and effort that you spend getting your seeds two seedlings, transplanting and getting them to actually get out into the garden. I sometimes wonder if it isn't just better to just not have all the hassle in a year and go and buy plug plants. Let someone else do the work that knows what they're doing in a professional environment. And when the weather's right, just go and buy the plug plants and plant them out. I know it's not the same fun. And there's an urge in everybody every year when the growing season starts to come round, you want to get planting the seeds. It's as simple as that. But I don't think there's a gardener out there at all, if they put their hands up truthfully, will say, they haven't been to a garden centre or Morrison's or somewhere else, Aldi or something like that, seen a plant and thought, I'll just take that and I'll pick that one up and I'll, I'll have that. I'm pretty certain every single gardener does it, guys. Let me know if I'm, uh, if I'm wrong. Put a comment in the section below. Gonna have this cup of coffee, guys, and I don't know what else I'm gonna get done because the weather is uh, raining on and off, on and off, on and off. But I'll try and do a little bit more over in the garden. I'll see you later. Right, guys, very quickly, dodging the rain drops in and out. We've now planted some more vegetables in this bed. So we've put the last of the uh, beetroot. That tray of onions, they were suffering, so some were surviving, some were, some had died completely on me. So we took out what was salvageable, and we've planted them in this bed here. So we've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. About 17 or 18 onions in there. And we've got uh, several clumps of beetroot dotted in between the two Brussels sprouts. Uh, there was a lettuce in there which something took the top clean off it so don't know what happened to that um, but yeah the lettuces that we plant interplanted between the turnips as you can see <laughs> are now being swamped out by the actual turnips they're growing so well the turnips I didn't expect this in the last video you've seen that they were keep holding their own and keeping above but we'll leave them anyways guys they're in there I don't want to disturb them again they are actually just getting established as you can see now and they're greening up lovely so we're just going to leave them and see if they do manage to survive in between those like I say it's no big deal with plenty of lettuces and then we've put uh, one two three four there's actually two in a cell so what we've done is we've double planted two, four, six, eight of the spinach in this bed outside. See if they fare any better regarding pests. We are going to cover this as well, similarly as we did with that, because those leaves will be, uh, because there's beetroot in there as well, the birds love the beetroot leaves. In particular, 
we do get you do get a lot of pests other pests that like beetroot as well but birds in particular will take the tops off within minutes if we leave them um, depending on the weather and if we have time I'm going to try and get the peas in here as well and maybe something else in that bed but as you can see we're fast getting these beds filled up now this one's fully planted out but we could get onions dotted in there between single onions in there in between those as well um, but for now I'm quite happy with how things are going so what we've also done while it's a cool day is we've now got the fish blood and bone oh by the way I found these uh, these racks as well which are going to come in handy you'll see these that that happening in a later video so you probably remember me saying I was going to put some shelving up above the window well these are going to sit on the bench basically and possibly even across the back as well I haven't made my mind up yet or whether I'm going to put something tall in the back of there I haven't made my mind up so what we've done with all of these trees now is we give them flesh, f f flesh fish blood and bone every one and then we've basically soaked these pots with numerous watering cans of water you know, really deep, really, really deep watering and until you can basically see water running out of the bottom of the pots as you can see all the water's running out the bottom of the pots so they've been absolutely soaked with two or three watering cans and they've had a really good deep watering and we've now put the bark chips over the top after we've so we've fed them we've deep watered them and the bark chips on the top because it gets really hot in here guys and even with the ventilation um, it was basically baking this soil so quickly it was for, it was a forever job of watering these plants and we've done an experiment with just one plant and it was this one here last week so earlier in the week what I'd done was I left all the others dry and I absolutely drowned this till it was pouring out of the bottom of the uh, the tub and then we covered it over now this is a nectarine now normally they like to be kept dry but they do need a good drink now and again so as an experiment we used the one tree to see what effect doing that would have on these trees and I'm pleased to say it looks brilliant in comparison to these ones which have got yellowing on the leaves which so sometimes yellowing can be over watering or it can be under watering and it's a fine art getting that right and if you don't know you have to experiment guys so what I've done was I took the smallest of the nectarines and I experimented with that one plant early in the week and we give that a good soak and everything else was left dry we give it a good soak and we mulched it and then we left it and I thought one or two things are going to happen either it will wilt and die or wilt and give up the ghost for this season or it will positively thrive now it also had yellow leaves and as you can see they've all dropped off and it's now absolutely beautiful there might still be an odd one here for instance but that will just come off in my fingers there you go uh, but it's pretty much cleared itself of yellow leaf uh, unlike these ones which are getting more and more as the week goes on and this is what happens you get leaf drop and that's because it can be because it's over watered or under watered but because that was a success we're going to take it that this is what they needed and we've now done exactly the same with the orange tree uh, the lemon tree the orange tree the peach tree and the other nectarine and likewise with the cherry and the pear on the end and they should be good now uh, I can keep putting my finger in and testing it but they should what we'll do is we'll let these dry right back now for probably about a month or sooner if I put my finger under there and it's bone dry but this will the mulching on the top will stop those drying out so fast these these pots guys plus the plants will tell me if there's something wrong so we're uh, yeah just for what it's worth we've also give these some fish blood and bone we have got some new growth which is a little on the pale side um, which would suggest the lack of nutrients we give them fish blood and bone mixed it in 
and watered them in and we've done the same with these, we've mulched the top and we'll wait and see. I'd actually lose, was starting to lose most of the leaf on the lime and I'm not sure whether it's over watering or under watering as I say guys but we've done the same anyway, we'll just wait and see what happens with that. The grapevine is coming on a tickety boo, we need to get that put in shortly. And the strawberries that we bought from Morrison's are climbing through the roof just about now and they're full of flower and doing really, really well. We have had to water those about three times this week, through the week. Now just another quick update. Oh, another thing I wanted to mention is, as you can see, these lettuces and uh, Brussels sprouts are taking hold now, as are the three carrots that we put in there that were surplus. The leeks are getting started. And our onions, I thought we were going to lose all these because the amount of rain we got in three days, but they are taking hold now by the looks of it. You can see these lettuces and onions that we put in really early in the year. We, don't, we lost four with the frosts, as you know, and the rest survived, and look at how healthy they are. Spring on bunches and bunches of spring onions in there in between as well, guys. So we've got the Lola Rossa and we've got the lettuces. Now, these are exactly the same age as everything that's in the greenhouse. And you can see the difference between how big the ones in the greenhouse are and how quick they became available, as opposed to these. But these are still doing remarkably well, considering the weather, guys. You remember me telling you, I left the turkeys to the frosts and etc. And they did get them. And as you can see, we've got a bit of frosting on the leaves here. But I honestly, in all the years, haven't really been too worried about this. The potatoes do just fine. If it gets really severe, when they're only just getting started, it can basically set them back and knock them back. But you see little bits of frosting on here. But me personally, I really don't bother about it, guys. I just let them get on with it. They will come through. Um, and as you can see, everything is unprotected and still in the beds and grown. A little bit on the sporadic side, um, one there only, just starting to come up where all the rest are. We've got some wheat coming up there as well, which we need to start getting on top of shortly with all the rain and the sun and the rain and the sun. But what is what I have noticed is I'm getting lots of nettle and this is off the cow manure that we put in there because we put layers of cardboard down again. Uh, these are no dig beds, as you know, but we're getting lots and lots of nettles, but thankfully and hopefully they're only down as far as the cardboard. So we'll let them get a little bit more size so I can get a good hold of them and pull them up by the root. We'll let them get a little bit bigger, guys. And then once we give that a weeding, the turkeys will canopy out and uh, basically hold it back and it'll get another weeding when we lift the potatoes. Some more lats for projects, which are going to be to make framing over the beds. You'll see those in later videos, guys. The carrots have got absolutely swamped in here. We've had that much rain. And one or two of them have gone yellow, as you can see. They've had too much rain. They don't like it. And one or two of them are going back. If, it doesn't, if this weather doesn't behave itself, we're probably going to lose some of those, or if not all. The strawberries are doing absolutely brilliant. They love it. This is the type of weather the strawberries love. They're getting lots and lots of flowers on now. And we'll be getting these covered over shortly before the strawberries burst out. And we'll get a bit of a cover over here and we'll lift these plant pots back down again, guys. So that's just a quick tour. Right, um, let me have a little potter and think what else I can get done. Right, guys, I'm back in the shed again. As always, having a cup of coffee. Final roundup for the day, and I'm going to keep it short because I'm conscious this video has probably turned into a feature film. Um, I haven't showed you what else I've got done, but I've got another, quite another little bit done. Um, we got that bed cleared down in the polytunnel, like we said we were going to. We've got all the tomatoes planted, with the exception of three. We've got onions planted in between each of the lettuces. We got the, um, as you know, we've got the beetroot and some onions planted in that other little bed. I've got all the peas planted in the big bed and the canes in and the strings up. Um, I've got a couple of, uh, I've got a, I planted a, a grape in this polytunnel, took the other little one over 
to go with the other one into the big polytunnel, into the big tree house. Um, tidied, started tidying some pots away and one thing or another. I'm getting things down to a bare minimum in this polytunnel now, basically. Um, so we'll give you a look at that tomorrow uh, because otherwise it's just going to turn into a feature film. Um, I've had enough for today. It's been just pottery, but really good jobs, jobs that needed jobbed, basically. Uh, so it's been a productive day. Tomorrow we'll give you a look at the uh, pigeons. We'll give you a look at these youngsters in here, this second round that nobody's seen yet. Uh, you see how those are coming on and what we've got and one thing and another. So we'll give you a look at those. Um, and then we'll give you a look at what we've got done this afternoon and anything else that we get done tomorrow as well, guys. For now, don't forget to like, dislike, leave a comment in the section below. Stay safe wherever you are in the world. Be practical. Keep yourselves out of harm's way. And I'll see you again in the next video. And thanks for watching.